We don't for the it's law is fight. holy. It's submission. Huh? And the commandment is holy. We know and just and good. good. So the laws are just and good. Now, 14, 14 about spiritual. Spiritual. Verse 14. Huh? But we know that the law is spiritual. So we know that the law is spiritual. We, this is our personal. I am calling out to people. So under sin. So under sin. So the, the law is a spiritual thing. Don't mind him. Because as a people, we don't know who we are. We don't know why we're in the conditions that we're in. And then as a people, we don't even consider nor care why we're in this condition. Yes. You're thinking about day to day just to survive to get to the next day. We ain't even thinking about a week in advance, let alone a couple of seconds in advance. That's just how our people are. Why? Because the powers that be set up a system for us to be dependent on it as well to keep us in sin. Yes. I'll show you. Read. Psalm chapter 64, verse 6. Read. They search out iniquities. They search out iniquities. We all just read from the Bible that sin belongs to the children of Israel. So if not doing God's commandments equals sin, read that again. They search out iniquities. So these certain people read our law book to try to search out how to keep us in sin. Read. They accomplish a diligent search. These certain people have accomplished a diligent search looking at the nuances of us, how we walk, how we talk, how do we commune one to another. Read. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. So the inward thought of this certain person is deep. Meaning, when you say one word to them, they're going to break it down to the finite degree to try to study you because they're keeping tabs on you. Each conversation you have with this certain person I'm going to reveal, they keep tabs on you to try to keep you down. Because of how God set them up, they think 10 steps ahead of us. That's how they was made. Read it again. They search out iniquity. So that they is talking about the nation of Edom. Edom is the so-called white man of today. We get out. That, that is, that's according to the Bible. That's not my words. Read. They accomplish a diligent search. With them accomplishing a diligent search, why in the world will an Edomite be in our communities in the, the dead decayed state that it's in? You know? Why? Why are they here in our community? To study you. Read. Both the inward thoughts of every one of them and the heart. Of how many of them? Of every one of them. Every one of them think the same way. Right. Their sole purpose is to keep us in sin. So, they'll try to play your friend to keep you in sin. Right. To keep you continually breaking God's laws, statutes, and commandments, they'll try to be cool with you. Because we read, we'll, we'll get it. Read, finish that out. A diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Meaning they think 10 steps ahead before anything is said. So, if you want to have a cordial conversation with Edom, they're studying you. They're trying to see how you talk. What are your interests? How you dress? Why do you dress that way? Why do you watch certain uh, shows? Or what interest do you have or purpose in watching those shows? These are the questions that they ask themselves when they're even talking to Jacob. Why? Because they're trying to keep you in sin of breaking God's law. Now, check this out. Now, now that we know that Edom is the day that is talking about, because that entire chapter is talking about the wicked. Give me uh, Malachi. Malachi 1. Because we got to put everything together because the Bible is a puzzle. And all praises to the Most High, he made it hard to read. All praises for that. Malachi chapter 1. Verse 1. Read. The burden of the Lord, uh, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? So, we as a nation, we say, How does God love us when our brothers are dying in the street by our own people? I'm, I'm in a community full of.
of drugs, right. prostitution, right. homosexuality. Right. How does God love us? Read. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Now, this fight has been going on since the beginning of time. Jacob and Esau has been war they was warring in the womb before they even was born. When you read Genesis 25. Now it tells you in Genesis 25, Genesis is beautiful because it shows you uh, sociology. It shows you the spirit of each nation, how they act and how uh, what response you're gonna uh, get out of them if you act a certain way around them. The Bible tells you that. Word. Read. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? So yes, Esau was Jacob's brother. Read. Saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau. He what? And I hated Esau. So this is God showing you that he prefers one nation over another. Right. He hates Edom, but he loves Jacob. Right. According to the Bible, Jacob is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. But we are scattered throughout the earth. So that's not just primarily on the Western Hemisphere. That is a bulk of us where we are because why? We were brought over here through slavery. Exactly. But what about other places where we were brought in slavery? That's why we're scattered. But the bulk of us is here. Read it again. I love Jacob, huh? yet, and I hated Esau. So this is God saying out of his own mouth, he hates somebody. Read. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. Now the mountains of this nation is their kingdom. He lay it to waste. Read. For the dragons of the wilderness, whereas Edom say it, huh? we are impoverished. Now this is a time period. When was the so-called white man impoverished in the earth? Does anybody know history? Dark Ages. Why did they call it the Dark Ages? Because they was in the cage. That's when the black man told us. We was ruling, what'd you say? They was in the carcass mountains. They was in the carcass mountains of Georgia and Russia. That's what I'm about to say, bro. All right, what were you about to say? Ah, right. all praises, bro. Beautiful answer. At that time during the Dark Ages, we were ruling the earth for a thousand years. Now, how did we get that rule? During the uh, Roman Empire, during the Roman Empire, who do you think destroyed Rome? Question, anybody know history? Who do you think destroyed Rome? Of course, yeah, God, yeah. But who did he put the spirit on to destroy? It was us. We were the so-called gladiators of that time. Work. Caesar, Septimius Severus, that's his name. Septimius Severus, actually, if you look at gladiator, uh, Russell Crowe played, played him, but Septimius Severus was actually a Negro. That's he right. was not a so-called white man. Bring it on. He was not. He led the rebellion of our brothers and sisters that was in the army because he was the top chiefman of that army. He led a rebellion in uh, 193 AD. After that rebellion, that's when the Dark Ages started. Then they start calling Rome the Holy Roman Empire. Bring it up. Because who was in who was in power then? We were. Right. We was we had uh, high officials that was wicked as all get out. They wasn't following God's law, but we was ruling at that time. Read that again. Just to get y'all, th this scripture is telling you about history. Read. Whereas Edom say it. Start uh, start at the top. Verse uh, two. Verse two. Uh -huh. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Read on. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? So us as a people, we ask that question to the Lord every day. How do you love us when we in this decayed state? Read. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Read on. Saith the Lord. Huh. Yet I love Jacob. So God loved the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. And I hated Esau. He hated the so-called white man in his seed. Read. And laid his mountains and his heritage Waste. Now, that right there shows you that the so-called Caucasians, why they study us so much, they don't have inheritance. They don't have anything that they can go back to. They are
God, the vagabond on this earth. Right. That's right. Think about what a cancer cell does. It copy, replicates, destroys the original thing, and then decays the body. That's, That's exactly what they're doing in this earth. Right. That's right. Each and every nation that they conquer, they copy them. Well, they study them, then they copy them, then they kill them off, then they say that they were the originators. Bring it out. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said that their heritage is destruction. That's what that is. Read. His mountains and his heritage waste. So his, his cities, kingdoms, all he knows is destruction. Read. For the dragons of the wilderness. Uh -huh. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. So, they was impoverished during the dark ages. Read. But... We will return and build the desolate places. When did the so-called white man come back into power in the earth? What time period? Renaissance. Because the word renaissance means rebirth. Bring it out. So, we're actually seeing in one scripture time periods going on in one scripture. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Read on. They shall build, but I will throw down. Now, what did God say? They shall build. So God said, they shall build. I'm going to give them access to build their kingdom. Read. But I will throw down. But I'm going to throw down on their kingdom in the last day. That's right. That is our God right there because we're the only people that talk like that on this planet. Bro, That's no right. other nation used the word throw down in a sentence like we do. Bro. <laughs> Read. And they shall call them. I got you, bro. Read. The border of wickedness. So the border of wickedness is what Edom is. The border is the end and the beginning of something. So when you cross a border, you're in a, a place of limbo at that time when you're on that border. Now if you go forward, that's the end of the border. If you go back, that's the beginning of the border. So that scripture is saying that Esau is the end and the beginning of all wickedness that's in this earth. Read. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Read on. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So God has perpetual hatred for this nation forever. This shows you our God does not play. Right. And that it's our God, nobody else's God. Right. That's right. Now there was a, a statement made before about the other gods look like the other nations, correct? And we don't, we're the only ones that don't have a God that looks like us. I'm going to show you something. Give me Psalms 96, verse uh, 5. Give me that. And then give me Judah, 5 and uh, 20. Psalm chapter 96, verse 5. Bring it up. For all the gods of the nations are idols. So all the gods, Buddha, Krishna, Allah. Who else? Who else? Um... The, the uh, white image of Christ, Cedro Boger. These are what? Read. For all the gods of the nations. So all the gods of the Gentiles, the other nations outside of Israel, are what? Are idols. They're not real. They have no God. That's what that scripture is saying. Every We got to get under one mind right now, brothers and sisters. We This is our law book. Right. God, the God of creation, belongs to one people on the planet. That's right. That people is anybody that's under my voice, that's out of these tribes, that you're the people that God belongs to. Right. God always say, my people, thy people, thine people. That means it's a certain secluded uh, bunch of individuals that all, that's only reserved for God. The promises are only reserved for them. Meaning that this Bible only belongs to those people. Right. Read. But the Lord made the heavens. So our Lord made the heavens. Their dusty gods didn't make nothing. What, how in the world you have a, a God of gold, but you have to clean the God, and the God don't have the power to clean itself? You know? Why? Why? Give me a uh, Judah. Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. You know. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, uh -huh. if there be any error in this people. So if there's any sin within this people, we already proved where 
what, what sin is. It's the breaking of God's law. Who was God's law given to? God's chosen, which are the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. Right. Meaning, sin only belongs to the Israelites. That's the only people that can sin on this planet. Read. And they sin against their God. And if we sin against our God, now, let me bring it up to speed. This is a so-called Japanese man talking to his superior, Herlothenes. Now, this Japanese superior is telling them how to defeat us. Showing you that other nations know who we are. Right. And they know our, our kryptonite. So, read it again from the top. Now therefore, my lord and governor. So he said, okay, my lord and governor, or my captain. He's warning him, read. If there be any error in this people. So if there is any error or sin within the children of Israel, read. And they sin against their God. And they sin, meaning break their God's law, read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So he said, let us think now. This is going to be their ruin. Now we can overtake them, read. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. Read on. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, so if there's no sin within the children of Israel, read, let my Lord now pass by. Now, pass by. Do not mess with them. For why? Read, lest their Lord defend them. For what? Lest their Lord defend them. A lot of people think that this is a book of fairy tales. There is an account that our forefathers fought a battle without uh, instruments of war. You know what they did? Fasted, prayed, angels came and fought for them. That's right. right. That's how our God gets down. Right. Bring it our out. God fights for us if we do what he says. It ain't, it ain't just so, I'm not speaking uh, uh, figuratively or anything. I'm talking about he will send his angels out the sky. They will drop down and fight our battles if we do what he says. Really? That's right. And their God before them. And we become a reproach. And then we become a reproach against all the nations. Meaning, all the nations are going to take into account, oh, that's another one chopped up for uh, Israel. That's right. That, that's another one. Hey, they God don't play. Read. And we become a reproach Read on. before all the world. Is that it? Yeah. So, with that saying, now we got to understand, how can we return back to our Heavenly Father so he can protect us in these last days? Because when you read scripture, Nuclear destruction is going to happen to America. I'm going I'm to I'm uh, give me First Peter 3. Let's show you. Nuclear destruction is already uh, uh, said to happen to this land. Meaning there is not going to be an America no more in the coming future. This I ain't talking about Atlanta. The entire Americas is going to be destroyed. That's, That's right. If you Y'all need to look at the news. It, hey, if you're on BET, you're in the wrong area. Right. If you're on World Star Hip Hop, you're in the wrong area. Right. Because war about to break down. Read. So we're going to get the, the prophecy that explains the destruction that's going to happen to this earth. But this prophecy was actually said in the Old Testament many times over. Read. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Uh -huh. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now, when a thief comes into your house, do you have any awareness of it? No, meaning there's going to be a lot of our people that's not aware of this day that's coming. Read. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. What instrument on this planet can uh, make a noise for the heavens to pass away? Anybody know? A nuclear bomb, and they got something better than the H bomb. They made the H bomb look like a little uh, TNT dynamite uh, stick. It, it's, it's bad. But read it again. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So that great noise is that boom. Actually, if you look at test studies, when a nuclear bomb explodes, the air around it sucks in. Meaning it's a vacuum. It's almost like if you were to survive that, you would die of not breathing. Read. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now, I, I know all of us went to the trashy schools of this society. But in science, I know we study about elements. 
Now this says elements shall melt away. Each element has a different property and a different boiling point, correct? So that means this particular fire is going to burn everything instantly. Read it again. The elements shall melt. shall be burned up. So the works that are in that earth at the time is going to be a lot of sin. Right. Think about it. Think how everything is, is uh, building up. You have, uh, about two years ago, homosexuality passed. Now they're fighting for uh, bestiality rights and uh, pedophilia rights, right. if I'm not mistaken. Bring it out. Okay, so that that's reaching the earth now. Russia isn't in good terms with America. That's what I say, y'all need to stop uh, uh, falling into those uh, trap holes that the enemy is setting for you. BT, uh, World Star Hip Hop, all the entertainment, a lot of housewives. All that entertainment is created to keep you at a docile state so you don't think. Because once you think, it's a wrap. Read, hold on, hold on bro, uh, read. See then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So it says dissolve. That means have y'all seen Terminator? Terminator one. When uh um Sarah Connor was on the uh the, the fix, the bomb blew her away, and it was miles away from her. But the fervent heat melted her uh, bones right off her flesh. This says that in that day, those things are going to dissolve. That means it comes to nothing. Now, read it again, uh, where it says dissolve. Seeing then uh -huh. that all these things shall be dissolved. So those elements are going to be dissolved, and those wicked works in that day are going to be dissolved too. They're going to be destroyed. Read. What manner of person uh -huh. ought ye to be? So Paul is asking. What, I'm sorry, Peter is asking, what manner of person should you be if you know that this is going to happen? Bring it out. What manner should we be walking in as a people if we understand that nuclear destruction is going to happen to this land? Do you, you understand what I'm talking about? That's why it's a serious deal while we're out here. That's we right. are in a spiritual warfare because we're trying to get you guys safe on that day. Right. Finish that out. In all holy conversation. So in your conversations, you should be exalting your sister. You should be exalting your brother. And vice versa. That shouldn't be, nigga this, uh, uh, hold that. That's evil speech. Read. And godliness. Is that it? Okay, so, brother gone. Any questions so far? Any questions? Okay, so let's get some of those holy things that we have to do in order to be saved on that day. Because remember, that day is gonna come as a thief in the night. Meaning, the natural person, or the not, the carnal man, he's not thinking about spiritual things. Meaning he's not watching the times. He's not watching the news. He's not watching what's going on around in the earth. Because God is doing this for our redemption and our redemption only. That's the only reason you see there's no peace in the Middle East. You know why? We ain't home yet. That's why there ain't no peace. That's our homeland. That's right. Get, get that. Get that. Real quick. Uh, uh, Galatians. Which sister? He said, what do you mean by the thief in the night? Like, when you keep saying, because I'm trying to see, do you mean a bad spirit, or are you saying like a... No, like it's, you said a thief in the night. I'm just trying to understand what you mean. Gotcha. When it talks about the thief in the night, it's actually talking about the attributes of that day. Meaning, a thief comes unaware. When everybody least expects it, that's when a thief will come. But if you're always uh, expecting a thief to come or break in, what are you going to do? What are you going to have in your house? Protection or security when you're not there. So you're always protected everywhere you go. That's the point. Now, if, if you know that this thief is coming or that day is going to come as a thief, what should you be? You should be ready at all times. You should be ready to go any moment. Read. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Huh? But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. 
which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is above every land that's on the planet. It's above every land on the planet and it's free to every land on the planet. Now it, it said it's the mother of us all, showing you we originated there. The mother of us all that goes to Genesis. So uh, give me um, Deuteronomy 22 real quick uh, so we can get some laws to keep ourselves holy. Because I remember you had a question about the parents when Captain was uh, here. I remember that. Let, let's get it for you. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Huh? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh huh? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read on. For all that do so are abominations unto the Lord thy God. So this scripture is actually showing you a dress code. Read again and uh, give me Romans 7. Romans 7, uh, 14. Scripture things. Oh, 12. Scripture things. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So it says that a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, meaning it belongs to a man. So what article of clothing belongs to a man? A dress and a pair, man. No, sir. Get sober first, then I'll deal with you. What article of clothing? Uh, pants. Pants. Pants belong to men. It's throughout the scriptures. Um, read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what article of clothing belongs to women? A dress, skirt, what else? What up? Bro, well, okay. So these, those hey, things belong hey, to a woman. Let me ask you a question. Oh, they're talking. Do y'all think? For all that do so are abominations hey, unto oh, the Lord thy like God. So all they that do these things are an abomination. Yeah. All those that do that are an abomination, meaning God hate those things. Because why? You're cross-dressing. That's what you're doing. You're in the midst of cross-dressing. The woman is trying to put on the spirit of a man. The man is trying to put on a feminine spirit. That's cross-dressing. And we're going to show you clothing is spiritual truth. Read. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Read on. Wherefore, the law is holy. It's submission. And the commandment is holy. Read on. And just and good. So, the laws are just and good. Now, 14, 14, about spiritual. spiritual. Verse 14. Uh -huh. For we know that the law is spiritual. So we know right. that the law is spiritual. This is all personal. This is all personal. But I am going to be sold under sin. Sold under sin. So, the, the law is a spiritual thing. Don't, don't mind him. Do not mind him. Now, the law is a spiritual thing. Now, each and every law, has, we have a dress code. We have food that we have to eat. We have all this stuff that we have to do. Right? So, with that said, that means if we put on God's law, there's a spirit behind it. If we don't do it, there's a spirit behind that as well. That's what we're saying. So, with our dress clothes, there's a spirit behind it. Right? All right, give me, um, give me Jeremiah 17 now, real quick. Bring it over. Because, 17-9, real quick. Jeremiah it's chapter 17, verse 9. Read on. The heart is deceitful above all things. So, if you want to follow your heart or your mind in this state, it's deceitful above all things on the planet. Your mind will tell you that sin is okay. Because you don't know what sin is, correct? As a people, we don't know. So read. And desperately wicked. And what? Desperately wicked. So, don't listen. That's what I say. Just pay attention to this. Don't listen to that. Because the Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things on the planet. Why would you listen to your wicked heart in this state? Why? It's crazy. That's why we're in the state we're in right there. That's right. With that attitude. Bring it out. That's why we're here. Right. As a people. Now, um, give me, uh, do, we'll turn back to Deuteronomy 2 and 2 and 5. No. Because now we got to show you the dress code. Then we got to show you the judgment of not following that dress code. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So a woman shall not wear pants. Read. 
neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a man is not supposed to wear dress, panties, bra, that stuff that, that belongs to a woman. Read. For all that do so are abominations. For all that do so are abominable in the eyes of God, meaning you committed sin. Now, why is it okay if you're an actor? The actors get a pass. Why is that? Explain that to me. Why? They get a pass. Oh, he's an actor. Tyler Perry, for a good example, playing uh, Medea. Is that uh, according to the laws of God? But Tyler Perry is supposed to be speaking the laws of God, or speaking the Bible, in a dress. You see the hypocrisy? Bring it out. Now, now that we said that, give me Deuteronomy 13. Give me Deuteronomy 13, because that is a, there's a wicked holiday that's coming. It's, it's on uh, Monday. A wicked holiday. Let, let's get it. Read. Start at one. Start at one so we get the context. Start at one. Verse one. Uh -huh. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams. Now, this is a law in the Bible how you can depict between a false prophet and a real prophet. It's a law on it. Read. Now, Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter, is the law behind the false prophet or the real prophet. Read. And giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Read from the top again, because they need to hear that, dreamer of dreams. Read. If there arise among you uh -huh. a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, Read on. and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, uh -huh. and the sign or the wonder come to pass. So if the sign or the wonder comes to pass to that prophet that said that, read. Say, let us go after other gods, read on. which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Stop. What? Commandment are we breaking if we go for other gods? Anybody know? Don't have no other god before me. Don't have no other god before me. Beautiful, bro. That's in the tent. So you breaking the first commandment. Read. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. You shall what? Shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet that tell you to go after other philosophies outside the Bible. Read. Or that dreamer of dreams. Or that dreamer of dreams. Read. For the Lord your God proveth you uh -huh. to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So with those people on the earth, God is proving Israel. He's proving who's really for him. Now are you going to follow what he says? Or are you going to follow uh, behind the skirt of a man and follow what he says? Bert, and and uh, think that his words trump the Bible. Is that it on that? Now, what philosophy did Martin Luther King get his whole idea from? Bring it out. A dream. Huh? A dream. A dream? Okay, but from what nation? He got it from India. Oh, India. Exactly. In the Bible, the, the East Indians are so-called Elam. That's their name in the Bible. The Elamites. So East Indian, uh, he, he had an East Indian philosophy. That was outside the Bible. So why are you going to mesh a philosophy that's not even commanded in the Bible? You, you see that? You see the hypocrisy? He had his Bible open, but he also had um, Mahatma Gandhi's book open too. Telling you principles out of that instead of telling you the laws of God. Bring it out. His philosophy is false. Martin Luther King, look at what, look at what his dream did to us. This is Bring a nightmare. Up. This is a dream. We at the bottom still. We first hire, uh, last hire, first fire. Is this a dream? Is this a dream you want to keep living in? No, it's a nightmare. Read it. Jeremiah chapter. Go to um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. You get it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter twenty-three, verse twenty-five. Go ahead. I have heard what the prophet said. So I heard. This is God speaking. I heard what the prophet said. Read. That prophesy lies in my name. That prophesy lies using my Bible. That's the name of God. For the name of the Lord is the word of God. That's his name is this. Bring it out. So read it again. Let, let's get in context. Read it. I have heard what the prophet said. That prophesy lies in my name. So I've heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies using my Bible. Read. I have dreamed. I have dreamed. Who had a famous speech named that? 
Who? Martin Luther King. So he's that false prophet that God is actually addressing right now. Read. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? So how long is this philosophy going to be in the minds of the prophets? That is heavy. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.